guys, what's up? Today I'm sharing the top 10 things to do in Tulum. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Natasha. If you are new to my channel, I make videos about travel, lifestyle, and fitness. So as you guys know, I was living in Tulum for a few months and I made a few lists of things from restaurants to the best things to do and all of that. So in this video, I'm going to share what are, in my opinion, the top 10 things you need to do if you are visiting Tulum. You might be only going for a few days or a week. So I wanted to consolidate my favorite things down into a very actionable list so that way you have a proper guide for what you need to do when you are visiting Tulum. So the first thing I suggest that you do is of course visit the hotel zone and in particular there are a few hotels that I think are very special. That is Azulik which is towards the beginning of the road of the hotel zone road and this hotel as probably most of you know already it is an architectural masterpiece. There is a museum, the hotel is absolutely beautiful, and there is a restaurant, there's actually two restaurants, Kinto and Sinja, and they are so beautiful. You can lay in these nets. Insert a picture here of me laying in the net. And then you can also book a sunset experience where you have dinner and you're overlooking the jungle and watching the sunset, which is absolutely beautiful. Definitely recommend visiting Azulik and I actually have a vlog coming up or it may already be up by now from Azulik which I will make sure to insert in the screen down below and if it's not up yet make sure you subscribe so you can catch it when it does go live because I give you a tour of the museum in Azulik and also the food, the bar, Quinto, staying in the nets, and some other cool things I got into that day. There's also Casa Malca, which is Pablo Escobar's old house turned hotel and restaurant, which I do feature in a few of my videos already. If you haven't checked out my other vlogs from Tulum, go ahead and do that also. So I think Casa Malca is really cool. Nomade is supposed to be amazing. Be Tulum, Paya Playa, of course, Ahau, and the sculpture where everyone takes a picture. Insert my picture in front of Ahau right here. And yeah, there are just so many beautiful hotels and so much architecture and cute, really stylish shops in the hotel zone that I think are really necessary to check out when you're in Tulum. My second must do is visit cenotes. There are over 5,000 cenotes in Quintana Roo, which is absolutely crazy. Cenotes are basically sinkholes um, that are under the ground and they are all fresh water or what they call agua dulce, sweet water. And you can kind of feel when you're in the water of a cenote why they call it agua dulce. It's very fresh and just special. Cenotes are very special. So definitely visit a few cenotes. If you are in the hotel zone, there is a couple cenotes in that area. One of them is called Clandestino and it is actually a restaurant and bar that has a cenote in it. And that was the first cenote I visited and you can see it in my vlog that I have posted on my YouTube channel. And then I also got to visit a few other cenotes. I have a few very special videos that I'm working on that are going to be released towards the end of my Tulum series, which is actually approaching. And one of them was filmed in Cenote Cristalino, which is so incredible. I went to the cenote with my two photographer friends who are actually working on this project with me and we filmed an amazing video there. So you will be able to see that and you'll probably be watching a little clip right now from that shoot, but another great cenote, there's Suitan, which is about an hour outside of Tulum and I really do suggest you go there if you have the time. I didn't get the chance to visit because I was really busy working while I was in Tulum for my full-time job, but I definitely would love to visit that one. There's Grand Cenote, Cenote Dos Ojos. I will leave a list of cenotes in the description so that way you can have that list for when you are visiting Tulum, but definitely visit a few cenotes when you are over there. My third must do is the Tulum ruins. So these ruins are actually towards the public side of Tulum Beach. There's the hotel zone and public side. And the ruins, the Tulum ruins are right over there. So you can access the ruins like by boat or you can go keep going down this road and see them. 
these ruins are so beautiful. They're on a hill that overlooks the ocean and just an absolutely stunning place. And that leads into another place that I really suggest you go is the public beach which is on the same area. And I actually prefer the public beach to the hotel zone. I think it's less pretentious, um, a lot more welcoming. There are a lot of really cool restaurants and bars over there too. There is Mezzanine, Tecchio, Pokna. And I do have a separate video on Tulum restaurants, the top 10 restaurants that you should eat at in Tulum. So also check out that video. I talk more about the public side of the beach there as well, but definitely visit the Tulum ruins and the public beach. The fourth place that I really suggest you visit is Sian Khan. So this is an actual natural biosphere reserve located at the end of the road of Tulum Beach. It is UNESCO protected. It is absolutely beautiful. I went here on the last day I was in Tulum, actually the second to last day I was there. This is where I went. I did a full shoot with the same team that I did the shoot in Cenote Cristalino with, and it is absolutely stunning. I saw crocodiles over there, which was crazy, and it's just such a special place, so I definitely suggest you go over there, visit. It's very remote, secluded, not a lot of people, but I think it's great to spend a day there and watch the sunset. And I don't know, it's kind of different than the Tulum vibes and you know, the touristy parts of Tulum. So I think you should definitely visit Sian Khan. And if you can, and you, if you have the time, you can even rent Airbnbs out there. So that could be a cool thing to do. My fifth thing that you have to do is explore Tulum Center. I actually really love Tulum Center, even more so than the hotel zone. I think the restaurants are incredible, which I talk a lot about in my restaurant video. I think the street art is beautiful. I really love having the local experience as well when I travel. Tulum is very different than the usual places that I travel to. I tend to go more off the beaten path to more less touristy areas or cities actually. So I did like hanging out in Tulum Center. I thought I met a lot of great people there. They actually have cool local parties and bars over there as well. There is this one street, I forgot the name, but it is where Malcarida is. It's a bar restaurant and there are a bunch of different bars and restaurants around that area and it just becomes a big street party with reggaeton and all of that. So definitely hang out in Tulum Center and explore it a bit. Also, I suggest going to Straw Hat Hostel. They have really amazing juices and cool people and just a lot of stuff. So definitely hang out in Tulum Center if you can. My sixth must do is Temascal. So Tulum has a very special energy and this has been there before it even became a hotspot for tourism, but there are of course a lot of natural ceremonies and spirit, a lot of spirituality in Tulum. So Temascal is the ceremony in Mexico where you basically go into a adobe hut, sweat lodge, and you're in there for a while and there's someone leading the whole ceremony with, with songs and chants and just guidance. And it's a very detoxifying and spiritual, I know I said that word a lot, but it's just a very spiritual and grounding experience. I actually did this multiple times. I was going almost every week and I have multiple videos documenting this experience and also how I felt afterwards. I highly suggest you do this if you have the time and chance because it was so special. Each time I went, I went to the same place and I'll leave information or I'll leave the video to that down below and also in the screen so you can see what I'm talking about. I think it's really special and everyone should try it at least once. It is very difficult. It's challenging but when you get through it you feel like a new person like you're reborn so definitely temescal is something you must do the seventh thing i think is a must is of course yoga at holistica and also papaya playa and other places so going along with temescal and how Tulum is kind of this hot spot for good energy and spirituality. There are so many amazing yoga instructors and just spiritual wellness coaches and leaders that come to Tulum and they are able to teach and give their energy and all of this. So I was able to experience that. If you aren't aware, I did do my yoga teacher training and I 
I do teach yoga classes as well. So doing this was really special for me and it was actually a huge reason why I chose to move to Tulum was the spirituality aspect and just becoming closer with nature, the earth and going inward in myself. So I would visit Holistica quite often, almost every day when I was living in Tulum. And I would take classes there from Ashtanga to Vinyasa, Power Vinyasa, Kundalini. There's so many different options and other ceremonies as well. There's sound healing, so many things at Holistica. So definitely visit Holistica. And I did do a class at Papaya Playa. I just posted a vlog. I think it should be up by now from Papaya Playa. And I also have multiple vlogs from Holistica as well. If you're curious to see what the whole compound looks like, because it is absolutely stunning. There are beautiful rooms for yoga, the restaurant, just the whole estate of Holistica is so stunning and same with Papaya Playa. So definitely check out those videos because it really is special. And I think while Tulum has a lot of parties and a lot of this fast life and this tourism and all of that going on, there's also this side of spirituality and wellness and just becoming closer and connecting with the earth that I think is so important. So finding that balance in your trip between both or just going towards the spirituality side, if you're not going there to party, you will get so much out of it. So I definitely think you should do some yoga while you're there. My eighth must do is is eat the food. So eat the street tacos, go try all of the different Mexican street foods. There's so many things, please be careful. I highly suggest not eating fruits that are uncooked. I think cooked food is usually better, but I did get sick when I was there. I have a whole vlog on that and how I almost literally died. I was almost gonna go to the hospital. I was so sick. So be careful with that. I do have a stronger stomach as well. I travel a lot and I don't tend to get sick easily, but I got really sick over there. So be careful. But I have a video actually that either is out or coming out about Mexican street food. And I actually was with my friend Nomadic Matt. He is a huge travel blogger, probably one of the OG travel bloggers. And he was living in Tulum for a little while. He came down there and we met up because he lives here in Austin as well. So we tried some Mexican street food together. So be sure to check out that video as well. I show you the best street food places and stands in Tulum to go to for what. So there are panuchos. Panuchos are my favorite thing. Please try them. I know that sounds like a weird name, but I explain what those are and where to get them in that video. So I'll leave the link for that below in the screen or subscribe if you haven't already so you can catch it when it comes out. My ninth must do is to move around. I don't suggest staying only in the hotel zone or only in the center. If you are there for more than three or four days, I suggest staying in at least two areas. So maybe you can get an Airbnb or a hotel on the beach for a night or two and then move to the center or move to La Valeta, which is where I actually was living when I was in Tulum. That's a really cool area and it's actually where Holistica is located and they have a lot of restaurants over there, but that's all in my other videos as well. But there's also Aldea Zama, which has beautiful villas and it's more like a residential neighborhood area. So if you can move around, Aldea Zama has really cool things as well. It's more residential, but there are some really nice restaurants in that area. So yeah, I would definitely explore different Airbnbs. I have different videos showing a few Airbnbs that I stayed at that are absolutely incredible, but there are so many cool hotels and Airbnbs and just places to stay. So that is my ninth tip is to try different things out, see the different architecture and just decor of places in the style of Tulum and get inspired to um, bring some of that back with you to the US or I don't know, just explore the different places you can stay. That's my ninth tip. And my 10th and final tip for what you have to do when you are in Tulum and probably the thing I get asked about the most on YouTube and Instagram is jungle parties. So I have a lot of videos about jungle parties. These are like they're called parties in the jungle. 
Usually you cannot take your phone. They bus you or shuttle you out to these parties in the middle of the jungle. Sometimes they're near cenotes and there are lights and people that you don't know and you don't have your phone and the music is so good and you just have this really special experience because usually it's like no one has their phone and you're just there in the middle of the jungle in Mexico and you're just forced to live in the moment and just take everything in. My first jungle party was so special. I met some of my soon to be best friends there. And after that, like we were just bonded for life, you know, like I still talk to those people every day and, and it was just an incredible experience overall. And I ended up going to a few more jungle parties since then and telling people who are going there where the jungle parties are at. So if you are able to, please attend a jungle party. I know with high season going on and all of these different things and COVID and stuff, they're, they're having less jungle parties and it's harder to find them. But if you do have the opportunity to go to a jungle party, I would highly suggest it. And yeah, they are very special. So these are my top 10 things to do if you are visiting Tulum. I hope you found this video really helpful. I'll put as much information as I can in the down bar so you can figure out how to plan your trip. I also want to add that I do give travel consultations and you can book time with me on my Calendly calendar if you would like to have a one-on-one -on -one Zoom meeting with me so I can help you plan your trip, figure out where to stay and all of that. You can find that link also in the description down below. If you haven't already, please give this video a big thumbs up. Hit subscribe for more Tulum videos and more videos about travel in general. And of course, hit the bell so you can be notified when I upload my future videos about Tulum and all my videos also. But yeah, I hope you found this very helpful. I have so many videos about Tulum. I think I have over 20 or 30 now. So be sure to check all of those out if you're planning your trip. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Oh, 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 oh,